Elon Musk is done. In this video, I'm building my own Twitter on the blockchain. Unlike Elon, I have no money and no users, but I have solidity and VS code. He has no chance. This is my masterpiece. We can log in, and once we're logged in, we can see our address. It's like your username, but on the blockchain. We can create new tweets. We can see a feed with the latest tweets, and we can reward content creators with tips. And the big difference with the real Twitter is that the data is completely decentralized and there is no censorship at all. Which means we will finally be able to see all conspiracy theories without any interferences. How did I put together this project? So here's the idea. We have users which interact with the front end. This is a web page in a browser and it's built with HTML, CSS, JavaScript and React. The front end will interact with a wallet called MetaMask. This is where users store their private key, the equivalent of a password. It's a huge difference compared to the real Twitter. In our decentralized Twitter, there is no centralized place where hackers can steal all the passwords. The front end interacts with a smart contract on the blockchain. This is where we will have the logic of the app and where the tweets will be stored. And to write this smart contract, I used a programming language called Solidity. This is another huge difference compared to the real Twitter. The core logic of the app runs on the blockchain, which means it's impossible for any government to come and impose some sort of censorship. This is a new world with infinite freedom, a bit like Mad Max. Well, not sure this is the best example, but you get my point. All right, let's go build this thing. Where do we even start? There are all these moving parts, the front end, the spot contract, and the wallet. This is scary, but don't worry, we're gonna take it one step at a time. And we will start with the logging in the front end. For the front end, I picked React. This day, this is pretty much the standard framework for the front end. The hard part is the connect button. When you click on it, it connects to MetaMask. MetaMask is a crypto wallet. Technically, this is a browser extension. This is where users store their private key, which is used to send tweets and tips. There are three steps during the login process. First, we need to wait for MetaMask to be loaded. After, we will ask the user to grant us access to their wallet. And it just means that our code will be able to access the address of the user and also have access to their private key. So technically, we could steal all the money of the user, but MetaMask really believes in the developer community and just trusts us not to do bad things. Of course not. What were you thinking? The private key never leaves MetaMask. This is a golden rule. Alright, so once a user gives us access to their wallet, the connect button automatically turns into this. The address of the user, plus an avatar that represents the address. And since you're asking, yes, this avatar is the same as the one you can see in MetaMask. How did I do that? Did I steal the code of MetaMask? Well, I could have done it since MetaMask is open source, but I'm more lazy than that. Instead, I just use their library. You give it an address, and it produces a unique avatar. So once the user is logged in, we can allow them to create a new tweet, and when the user create on the submit button, it's going to send the tweet to our smart contract. But how can we do that? In our front end, we're gonna create a transaction template with the detail of the tweet, and we're gonna ask the user to sign this transaction with MetaMask. And once the user approves the transaction, it's gonna be sent to the blockchain by MetaMask. So we don't have to do it ourselves, MetaMask takes care of it. All right, but once the tweet is sent to the smart contract, how are we going to represent this tweet in our smart contract? In our smart contract, each tweet is represented by this data structure. You can see the different fields of the tweet. And to group all these tweets, we're gonna need a mapping. You can think of it as a key value store, where the key is the ID of the tweet and the value is the tweet itself. And we also have a function to create each tweet. Okay, so back to the front end. How about the feed of tweets? For that, we need to query our smart contract and get a list of all the recent tweets. And if you think it's easy to do, it's because you're a noob and you don't know Solidity. Because otherwise, you would know that iterating over a list of objects isn't exactly the easiest thing in Solidity. In Solidity, when you have a mapping, contrary to JavaScript, it's not possible to iterate over all the values of this mapping. I know, it sucks. But don't worry, because I have more than one trick up my sleeve. For the keys of the mapping, I use a sequential integer, and we can also track the latest ID, which means it's possible to get a list of the most recent tweets. And this is how I was able to create the tweet feed. So are we ready to pop the champagne? Not yet. We have a small problem. Well, actually, it's a big problem. Every time a user sends a tweet, their ether balance is going down. Really? Why is that? 
That's because when we send a tweet, technically this is a transaction, which means we have to pay for transaction fees. And this is paid from the wallet of the user. Well, what's the big deal? People pay for all sorts of stuff, surely they can pay for that? I don't think so. Nobody is going to use this social network if they have to pay for each tweet. Mm, let me think. Dear Gigabrand, how can we make it cheaper? Okay, one simple idea would be to move to a cheaper blockchain, like the Polygon blockchain. Polygon is what we call a L2 blockchain for Ethereum. I won't get into the technical details. All you need to know is that it's an alternative to Ethereum where you trade security for cheaper transaction fees. And it's still very secure, it's just that compared to Ethereum, it's slightly less secure, that's it. And for our use case, it's a completely acceptable trade-off. But we have just scratched the surface. We can do even better than that. What costs a lot of money is when we store large quantity of data in the blockchain. So we need to find a way to store the tweet outside of the blockchain and somehow still maintain a certain level of decentralization and trust. And it turns out there's a solution. And for that, we are going to create a hash of the tweet. A hash is a digital signature. It looks like this. If you change anything in the tweet, the hash will be completely different. And what's really interesting with the hash is that it's much smaller than the tweet which means it's much cheaper to store on the blockchain. So instead of storing the tweet on the blockchain, we will just store the hash. And the actual tweet will be outside of the blockchain. Wait a second, outside of the blockchain, what does it mean? Will it be on a centralized server? Centralized? Gross. No, we can do better than that. We are going to use a project that has the coolest name ever. It's called IPFS, the Interplanetary File System. No, it wasn't invented by Elon Musk, but yes, it's supposed to work in space. IPFS is a decentralized storage network. It's a network of computers that allows anyone to read and store any kind of files. It could be text, images, or videos. This is not a blockchain, even though it's decentralized. And contrary to the blockchain, it's free to store data on IPFS. Okay, well, actually not exactly, because after 48 hours, files are deleted unless you pin them, which costs money. But it's still way cheaper than the blockchain. Okay, so we have the front end, the smart contract, and IPFS. But how do they work together? The first scenario is when we want to create a new tweet. On the front end, we create a JSON object that represents this tweet. We will have the metadata, like the address of the author and the creation date. And we will have the payload, which is the tweet itself. Once we have this JSON object, we send it to IPFS. And in return, IPFS is going to give us a hash that represents the JSON object. And finally, we store this hash in our smart contract by sending a transaction. And the other scenario is when we want to read tweets and display them in our feed. For that, the front-end queries the smart contract to get a list of the most recent tweets. What we get is a list of hashes, it's not the tweet themselves. Then, with these hashes, we get the actual tweets from IPFS. And finally, we can display these tweets in our feed on the front-end. But wait a second, how can we check the integrity of these tweets? We are not web 2 sims, we are web 3 chats, 100% paranoid. All you have to do is compute the hash of a tweet and compare it with the hash that you got from the blockchain. And if the tweet is authentic, these two hashes will match. Always keep in mind the expression, trust no one, verify everything. Okay, so thanks to IPFS, we have decreased a lot the cost of using our app. But users still have to pay for transaction when they send a new tweet because they have to store the hash on the blockchain. Can we do even better than this? It turns out we can. What we could do is delegate the transactions to a backend. User would create tweets on the front end, sign them with their wallet to guarantee their integrity, send them to the backend, and it would be the backend that stored the hash on the blockchain. And transaction fees would be paid by the wallet of the project, not the wallet of the user. To make it clear, it means that us developers will pay for the users. The money has to come from somewhere. And this is what we call a meta transaction. Whoa, our decentralized Twitter is freaking awesome. Nobody can control it. We can reward content creators with tips. And by combining the blockchain and IPFS, we make it cheaper to use. And if we add meta transaction to this, users won't have to pay anything. 
today you did learn something useful and you can include this project in your portfolio to help you find a Web3 job. I don't recommend to just copy and paste what I did. It's best to customize the project. You can modify or add new features to make it more convincing. I'm currently accepting a few students in my Web3 coaching program where we build together projects so that you can have a great portfolio and find your dream Web3 job. If it's something that interests you, follow the link down below to apply. Seats are very limited, so hurry up. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.